welcome to another construction video. Today's one is for tonic showcase number 25 which is called Up Up and Away but this is the second construction for this um, die set because you can also use the hot air balloon die to create a decanter. You have this extra die that is in the die set that actually creates this pointed lid that works on the decanter and then you use the main pieces for the actual hot air balloon to be the like bulbous round bottom of the decanter. And um, you will have seen a six-sided decanter in my up-close video, but as I was putting that one together, I thought, oh, I wonder if you can make it five-sided or even four-sided. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to show you how to put it together. It's very much similar to the hot air balloon, so hopefully this construction video won't be um, too long because I've already explained um, how to put all of the bits and pieces together, really, other than the pointed top piece. But I think to begin with, what I'm going to do is stick together four of each panel and then we'll see what we think and if not we'll go for a five-sided one so we're either going to go four-sided or five-sided um, because it's really easy to make a six-sided one because you already have the hexagons in there to create the very bottom of the box um, but I wanted to show you how I create a bottom of a box when I've changed how many sides it has so um, Let's do the pointed piece first and we're only going to partly construct this actually because I don't know if I'm going to do four or five sided yet. So we're going to cut one of these off to make it five sided but I won't cut another one off until I know if I definitely want to make it four sided or not because otherwise uh, it's going to be harder to stick that back on. So all I'm doing to get rid of one of them is just cutting straight along the score line so we've now just got rid of that one piece. I know I'd stuck a panel on it, but it doesn't matter. So we're now going to have a five-sided piece here. So we'll take this, um, you can see where I've added the adhesive, just along these um, long glue tabs down the uh, long side of the triangle, and then these extra little glue tabs on these bits here as well. But I think it was when I was putting this lid piece together, actually, that I thought, oh, I wonder if... Um, it would work as a, a four-sided or a five-sided box as well. So we'll fold all of this, but we won't completely finish putting this together because we don't know if we want it to be four-sided or five-sided yet. But you can see, as you pull this round, you could definitely go for a four-sided one and have a really pointy top to the box. And then you can pre-fold all of these ones, bending them round and pre-folding all of the... Um, score lines on there as well and we can see if this is going to even work as a four-sided box so if we brought these we need to fold that one as well if we brought these all round can we get a four-sided box to work with the angles of these pieces and yes we definitely could get a four-sided one to work and then if you brought the fifth side round you can see we can definitely get a five-sided one to work as well it's going to make a pentagon too so we'll go with the big sides of the box to see what we think first so we're going to put four sides of each of these pieces together first to see what we think so I've done exactly the same thing that I did for the um, hot air balloon construction I have put tape here and here on these pieces and then along this piece here and as I said in that video if you want to when you have stuck these together and you've got that exposed adhesive between the little teethy sort of um, glue tabs you can put your um, anti-static powder on there and it'll get rid of any of the excess adhesive that's there but um, for mine I'm just going to leave it because I can always do that at a later date but you can definitely do that if you want to do this kind of like um, cheats method of um, putting this together without having to stick little tiny bits of tape on all of these little teeth to put it all together. So I'm just going to pre-fold all of these. Everything goes away from us except for that bottom piece which comes towards us and this is actually going to be the tab that our lid, our pointy lid, is going to um, hook onto and that well not hook onto but you know sit on top of that's actually going to be um, where this goes together because this is going to be upside down um, when you compare it to the hot air balloon this whole piece is going to be upside down 
so we just want to pre-fold all of these I'm doing five in case we decide to go for the five-sided one um, and then you want to carefully kind of bend these and you can see here again like I was saying before you kind of want to just go with one decorative panel or a patterned paper of a solid and not do the two layers because even if you oh I mean when you've just got the one you can still bend it nicely to get that curvature on there but if you go for um, an intricate panel and a solid panel behind it to make it a different colour you might not be able to bend it as easily but ways to get around that is to use your um, alcohol pens to colour in the detail especially if you've done your main panel from black you can colour in um, all of the detail on there maybe even pick out that tulip design and colour it in to be an actual kind of tulip as well um, um, or you can use like your glacier paste and stuff and make the back piece all lovely and glittery and then stick the front ones on as well. So different ways of doing it. Then to stick these together, we're going to take the red liner tape off of there. You want to look at these two horizontal lines here and line them up and get that first tab stuck. And then you want to curve the two panels and then go down and stick all of the glue tabs as you go. So there we've got two sides and you can actually see just with two sides how that's going to make a square one if we want it to make a little square one as well. So we can then get the next one. And bring this around again looking at those two horizontal lines and then following the curves down as well. So now we've got three sides so you can see how that could be half the box and we do a six sided or it can be slightly less and there would be two more sides or it can be right round and you can have four sides on it. Sorry I don't know if you can hear that, there's an ice cream fan going past. Okay and then we can stick this last one, well could be the last one, might not be the last one, depends what we think about it. So we could do this and make it a four sided box and the way it's going to work is that's going to go up that way and at this stage actually you could if you wanted to just take all of those panels in, obviously cut off those glue tabs that are there but fold all of these pieces in and cut a square to go along the bottom and make it have a flat bottom to the box and it could be like a little vase or something it could be a little four sided vase like that or it could be um, a four sided box with the pointy lid on the top and you can take the lid off it could just be a flat bottomed box but to make the actual decanter that I think the die set is supposed to make you can also use the curved portions which were the top of the hot air balloon but this is now going to be the bottom of the box and this is going to go on here like this and then these will curve round and be the base of the box and I think it's this element here that I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get away with four sided box or whether we're going to have to go for a five sided one but same thing with this is uh, pre-fold all of these pieces and the adhesive for this I have just put it on that curved line there to get all of these glue tabs um, and normally I cover the back of one of the hexagons I cut two hexagons and normally I cover the back of one and use that to stick onto here but because we're changing the shape of the box I haven't got a piece ready because I'm not sure whether we're going four-sided or five-sided yet I kind of want to go for the four-sided one actually to really make it look different because you know going from six-sided to five-sided doesn't look as different um, but cutting out two of the sides and going down to a, a square one I think gives a nice sort of contrast not that I have the other one here to compare it to but I can compare it to the hot air balloon that I made and show you kind of like the size difference between them as well actually so we've got all of those pre-folded we can just bend them slightly I've left these ones plain because the way I decided to make this one is you have the curvature coming up here and then I have done these little pieces and put them up this way with gems on and I thought it looked quite nice having a plain bottom to it because um, it kind of makes everything else stand out really nicely then so we can take the tape off of there and we want to go 
uh, last time we put one of these together we started um, when in the hot air balloon one we started by sticking all of the panels to the shape first but because we don't know the shape yet um, I'm just going to go like this so we're going to stick them together at an angle I think this is still yeah they'll still go together at a right angle there so we just uh, putting the score line of this one up against the cut line of the other and we can just go up the side of it pushing the tabs into that adhesive that's behind there so there we've got two together then we can take this one off and we can start with that tab down the bottom again and stick these ones on And so now we've got our three side. Maybe it will work with the four side. It's just going to be taller, I think, because it's not going to be like a squat and curved. I think it's going to make it taller. So, yeah, I think I'm going to go with the four sided one to show you the difference and what it's going to look like. And I will show you how to make the base for this as well. So we can go like this. So as we're going for a square, you could look through your stash and find a square die that is the perfect size. Or I'm going to show you um, another way that I tend to make a base for a box. Or you could actually just hack at this piece with your scissors and um, cut it down into a square. Or you could use your paper trimmer. There's lots of different ways, especially if you're going for a regular square shape. If you're going for a pentagon, it would be a different story because... I don't think I have any pentagonal layering dies. I think I have a few pentagons that are meant to be bases for other boxes, but I don't think I have a nesting set of pentagonal dies. I don't think I do. I can't think of them off the top of my head if I do have them. Um, but yeah, um, it, it would be slightly more difficult. So I'm going to show you the way that I would make a bottom for this box, um, you know, whatever shape you've ended up making it. Because I think you could go bigger as well. I don't think you'd have to stop at the six-sided one. I think you could put more sides in and, um, you know, make even make it even bigger as well. So that is going to be the base of our little box. That's going to be the base piece there. And then this is going to be the, the top sort of portion of the box. And these are actually going to be stuck together. Um, and they're going to slide inside each other obviously I've still got to finish sticking this one together but that is going to be a really tall skinny one which is going to look really different um to making the five or six sided box and then it's going to have the pretty decoration there so if you're doing the four sided one you might want to add more decoration to this bottom panel because you can see it more because it's not got as much curvature to it but I do quite like it plain actually but or you could do a patterned paper with a subtle pattern that's a similar kind of creamy colour. And this colour of um, Textured Craft Perfect is actually the champagne colour, if you're interested um, what colour I've been using. So, to add our base to the bottom of this, what I would normally do is I would take some double-sided, and I would have probably done this beforehand because I would have thought about it more, but we're basically just adding some tape to um, all of the little glue tabs on the base of this piece here, just get a bit more tape, okay, and then we can take the backing off and push that one around and take the backing off. Oh, not the whole bit of tape, just the backing. And we, we're wanting to stick these at right angles. So as you're turning this and pushing them down, we want to try and get that to be as square as possible on the base of the box. And then take that one off and then push that one down. So we've now got a nice little square as the bottom of the box. Now usually I would just take um, a bigger piece of card, but because this is actually big enough we can just actually use the hexagon that we cut before so all I'm going to do is I would just put a scrap of card onto there like this and then all you do especially if this is pentagonal rather than square you just take your long bladed pair of scissors and you just snip and you can see you get the perfect shape then to fit on the bottom of the box you literally just run along 
the straight edge there and it works perfectly for um, odd shapes. So, or even if you do turn it into a heptagon or an octagon, you can do that as well and create your base for it. So we've now got the base of our little box and we could definitely line the bottom of that as well if we want to. So for this one, I'm going to show you the other way that you could trim down this piece. So you would trim down straight at those two sides like that and then you can actually use one of these to cut the height to make it square as well because we know these pieces are the actual um, length of the side so we could do that and then we can place that in the bottom of the box or that could have been the base of the box on the outside as well. There is a bit of exposed adhesive down there which is why I'm just putting it straight in. If I can actually get it to go in there. Okay, it's flipped over the other way, but you can see it does fit in there. Um, so that can be the lining of the inside of your box. And for this one, you're definitely going to want to use your anti-static powder to cover up the stickiness if you have gone with that route as well. Or you could cut um, some more of these side panels just from patterned paper, trim off those glue tabs, and then completely line the inside as well. Again, depending what you're going to use this for, because actually the opening of this box, these are going to be stuck together, so the opening of this box is only going to be this big, so technically we're not really going to be able to see inside, so I would probably say it's not worth lining it. We could just get away with putting the anti-static powder on there to just make it not sticky. We don't actually have to line the inside. So to finish the, the top part of this sort of main bottle kind of box portion, we're going to take the tape off that last side and then we can follow those glue tabs round and stick them all together to finish off the four-sided box. Then, just like with the hot air balloon, we have these tabs to do as well. Uh, but we only have four this time. And we can just follow all the way around. Now depending on um, again what type type of gift you want to put in here you don't have to stick this together the way I'm going to show you how to stick it together you could make it so that this pointy lid is stuck onto this and then like this is the whole thing that comes off but the way I decorated the other one I kind of liked the fact that this was stuck to this curved portion um, and it was just the pointy lid that came off. So we've stuck that uh, sort of bottom portion together and now we've got to stick around the neck of the bottle here as well. I really like how versatile this um, set is though. To go from a hot air balloon to a massive kind of um, decanter to a lovely kind of taller skinny sort of bottle shape, I think that's a really cool set that you can get all of those different styles out of it. And you know, you probably could make the hot air balloon bigger as well actually, especially if you use that um, that trick of sticking a piece to the top and then cutting your own shape to finish it off. Or you might have like octagonal um, nesting dies and you might have one small enough to do the top of the hot air balloon as well. So that is eventually going to stick inside of there and we'll figure that out in a minute. To make our actual bottle and we just need to finish off this lid first as well. That does stand up doesn't it? Yeah it does. <laughs> I just stood it up wonky then and it fell over. So we do only need four of these sides even though I've decorated this one. I will keep this because I'll probably use it somewhere else at some point and like in an art journal or something. So we can snip off one more of those. So we're now going to have a four-sided lid here. So we can take the tape off of that tab and then bring this round. We're actually going to have to, um, because we're making this left side, this point is going to be more pointy, if that makes sense. So this tab is going to bend if we put it round or not let us stick it properly. So we're going to want to cut that at a steeper angle so that when we fold this round, we can actually push this glue tab in enough to get it to stick and give a nice point to the top of this little box. So you have to often think about little things like that um, when you're altering how many sides something has. And then we can do these side pieces. There 
and then two more. Last one. And then we have our little lid here as well. So the lid can just fit straight on the top of this. And actually, making that a four-sided lid, it fits better than the six-sided lid. Um, in my up-close video, I will have showed you um, how I added magnets to the six-sided lid to make it stick on better. But um, it does actually stay on really nicely with the four-sided one. So that is our beautiful bottle. But we want to adhere these together and I'm going to do this in practically the same way that I did when I stuck the top um, two portions of the rainbow hot air balloon together in my previous construction video. So um, I don't think I'm going to take it apart this time, I think I'm just going to push the foam tape into there. So we're going to take squares of foam tape again and that's going to be the perfect kind of size, this sort of little squarey rectangly shape and we just take the backing off as well and we can just push that in there and then press it down and that's going to keep the sides together and keep that whole bottom portion of this kind of bottle together as well and then we're going to use those other pieces to decorate so we can just I'm pretty sure this was how I stuck the actual um, six-sided decanter together as well um, I just did it whilst it was already like this so that I got it nice and even all the way around. You could have done the hot air balloon like this as well if you wanted to, other than um, you know putting them all on and taking all the backing off and then pushing them together. You can definitely do it however you want to. You could do it with hot glue if you'd rather, you could do it with wet glue, whatever you want to do to get them to stick together, but I quite like this kind of method. And then because, again, we can't get our hands in that tiny hole, um, we can press from the inside with your glide folder. So we've now got the bottle but we want to make that look a little bit prettier so we're going to do these little gem encrusted semicircle things um, and how are we going to stick these on? I think glue on these bits and 3D foam on the back of them, back of the archway. So if we take four of these and I'm going to use a lower profile 3D foam so that they don't stick up as much and we can take a little square of this or a rectangle of this and put them all on there and then we can also I'm going to take the backing off of all of these first and then I'm going to put little blobs of glue on those little circle pieces. And then the glue can kind of um, start to dry as we're putting the other bits together. Okay, so we take one of these and then we want to press it. I think I want these little circles to match up actually just there, so maybe I'll put the little circles on first let the glue stick on there and then press the top portion on the glue has squished out a little bit because I did put quite a big blob on but if we just wipe it off before it dries, no one will know so we can do that and then we can do the next one might dab a little bit of that glue off and put that dot there and that one over there and then press the foam tape down and then same thing on that one and then the final one as well You can just press them from the inside. So there we go. We've got our finished little bottle with the pointy lid that goes on there as well. That could actually be um, if you wanted to make someone a really cool kind of gift, you could make them a set of Skittles 
kind of looks like a bowling skittle. You could do ten of them and have them as a set of skittles that someone can bowl a tennis ball out or something um, and knock them over. That would be quite a cool idea. And I've also done the little gift tag here as well, the little for you, um, which you could stick coming out of there, you could put it at the top here, um, you can put it wherever you want really. You can tie it around the neck of the bottle and have it dangling off a string as well. Maybe I'll do that if I get some twine. And we can put it through here and then pull that through the loop, I think. If I take the lid off, we, then we can tie this in a knot background here. Probably would do that in a double knot actually. Okay, that came a bit looser than I wanted it to, but anyway, um, you see what I mean by putting the tag around the neck of the bottle. It doesn't matter if that's loose really because it's not going to go over the top of that pointed lid we can just trim the excess string off and there you've got your little tag on your bottle or your skittle or whatever you want it to be really um, and I just love that you can actually turn it into a four-sided one I'm so glad the four-sided one worked and this is the eight-sided hot air balloon so if you had made the eight-sided decanter it would have been this big whereas the four-sided one is only this big and it's, but yeah, the four-sided one is taller. It's only slightly taller, actually. I, w I would have thought it would have been much taller than that. But it is actually only slightly taller. But yeah, I think that's a really cool way of doing it. Um, turning it into a four-sided one rather than a six-sided one. But I definitely think you could go eight-sided as well. So, I hope you enjoyed this construction video showing you how to make the decanter from showcase number 25 which is called Up, Up and Away and how to not only just turn it into a decanter rather than the hot air balloon but how to change the size of it as well. So, um, I kind of showed how you could uh, change it into a pentagon or um, a heptagon or an octagon and how you can easily make your own base for it if you don't have that actual size in the die set. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to check out the construction video of how I did the hot air balloon with the dangling basket on it as well. And I presume you've already watched the up close video where I would have shown you these two samples and the other ones that I created as well. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in the next video. Bye!